Would you be embarrassed? Think I'm being careless? If I said you're all I want more. Fingertips and collarbones. If I caught you on your own, would you mind my hand stitched in yours? I got it bad, bad. Oh, I see you in my sleep, and I want you mad, madly. Come running after me, you're in my bones, bones. Oh, I gotta let you go, but I don't know how when you're rooted in my soul. Oh, oh, oh. I gotta tell you, I had a dream last night. You came back to me after our goodbye. My arms you fell into, and you asked if I'd run away with. Never knew how lovely love could be. Forty hours give or take you. Call me when you are awake, and from our phones will crumble time and space. I need you here, here. Oh, I see you in my sleep, and I want you dear, dearly. Come running after me. You're in my bones, bones. Oh. Hello, hi, it's been a while. I mean, some artists don't upload for months and then pop on, but I've been somewhat consistent. So now I'm back and it's not that I haven't been drawing. I, I also haven't been drawing. It's mainly that just university and everything has started up with exam season approaching. So I've been doing that instead. But yeah, welcome to another studio vlog. I'm going to start this studio vlog showing you a purchase that I made 20 minutes ago on my way home. And for context, there is a gallery in the center of Vienna that sells Japanese woodblock prints. And they have expensive ones. They have ones by big names, Hokusai, Kuniyoshi, Yoshitoshi, all of those kinds of people that are a bit more expensive than what I can afford. But then they also have less known artists, smaller pieces, parts that were part of books. And this is by Kono Bayre. It's um, one of the Hyakucho Guafu, I think, the 100 bird pictures, 1881-1882. And let me take out the protective here. Yep, here it is. And this is the woodblock print that I got. It's actually two pieces of paper. As you can see, there's a slit in the center because these are book pages, I believe. They are signed and sealed and there's just these geese which I find unbelievably charming. And I've been looking at their other bird pictures, but then I saw this one and I was sold. I, I knew which one I'm getting. And I also love how in this, I'm gonna probably have to zoom in later, but no, I think you can see it. How in the black strokes at the top, the brush strokes were emulated so beautifully. So it really looks like somebody went with a brush and with a very dry brush and hacked away at it, but it's still, yeah, it's beautifully done. So now that I have my first original Japanese woodblock print, I need to find a place on my wall to hang it. But that shouldn't be my biggest problem. So I'll go do that. Place where 
Hi there, hello. Doing that much art or art that I have been doing, I have been sending off to get manufactured like the washi tape and that just takes a while till it gets uh, produced, manufactured and then sent to me. But today in the morning I got a text message from DHL which stated that my pins were going to arrive and they did. It was really fast shipping they were sent off on the 27th and today is the 31st so super happy about that and the pin i decided to make is a tengu this is one of the few b grades the a grades are already set aside for the shop update tomorrow oh that will not focus here it is this is my tengu design as you can see it's gold and super shiny and it's a tango mask or just a tango face i mean i guess for an enamel pin you can't really tell the difference and it's based on can't get it back in the baggie it's based on this sticker design i made quite some time ago this is also a holographic sticker there we can get a bit of the sparkle doesn't really work when there's no lights on in this entire room and i really like this sticker so I, at the time I made a whole sticker set with like Oni masks and Hyotoku masks and a Kappa mask. But then I decided why not turn one of them into a pin. And then I created a bunch of different pins. So I also turned this illustration into a pin design. And if I can open my iPad real quick I can show you the little pin doodles that I did. Well doodles they look pretty complete here they are let's just zoom out a little bit so you don't see every single thing i'm working on but as you can see this is the tango one i did and then there's the hyotoku mask that you can kind of see a kappa and on a mask a hyotoku mask and then there's a few other sketches around that i won't quite show you just yet but before spending a lot of money on all of these pins and the quality not being good, I decided to go with just making one at a time. So this Tango mask turned out really, really well. I ordered 50. We went back and forth a bit. I made a few samples because for the first sample, the colors weren't great. Just opened the baggie again. I just keep one out too show you what happened for the first pin was that they or i chose the color of the eye and the teeth for the hair as well so this part and this part was also this yellow which in my pantone color swatch book looked okay but when i saw the sample that they produced i was like yikes that looks like ketchup and mustard so I went back and forth a bit they produced a second sample I liked that more but there they actually made a mistake and made the teeth the same color as the hair and not the same color as the eyes although I had labeled it in my like pdf I sent them so they made that sample it looked great and they sent it to me and I'm really really happy with like the a grade to b grade ratio I have five I think five or six b grades out of the 50 so roughly 10 percent which from what I've heard online I know enamel pin manufacturers are really secretive with the things they do seems to be a decent ratio and what I'm also happy with is the fact that 
the B grades themselves also, I mean, this one is one, and I mean, I have to even look really closely again to find out why I labeled this a B grade. It's because it's like a tiny little scratch in between the eyes, but otherwise the quality is completely fine. And also like no enamel is in the wrong area. The colors are all correct. And all of the enamel, like the holes in the metal are filled in properly. So in reality, they're all pretty close to A grade. Then there's a few A grades that have the teeny tiniest of little spots or imperfections. But again, A grade doesn't mean 100% perfect. A grade means like good, good quality pins. And yeah, okay. My camera stopped recording and I missed the past few sentences. But I wanted to show you, this is the last thing before I get to drawing again, is that I had already created, come on, focus on this. Perfect. I had created a backing card design for the pin, which is slightly floral and has like my Kabujiro logo on the top and says Tango, Tango enamel pin. But then I checked and since I only made 50 pins, I'd only need 50 of them and printing only 50 business cards is really, really expensive per business card. So I think instead I'll either print these at home and it'll be slightly thinner paper. So it'll be like these, these I just print at the end of prints. If I need to cut off a bit, I just use the space to print these to write little thank you notes. It'll probably be this color with the Kabujiro logo on the back. Well, postcards, uh, business card size, not square. And probably maybe a pattern on top. And I print like a thousand of those for conventions. Because my the last batch of thousand I already used up since and then I haven't had conventions so I didn't need any. Sorry, I got distracted by it being shiny. I am like one of those birds, I forgot the English name, who collect things that are metallic and silvery and shiny. Anyways, I still need to figure out what to do for backing cards, but my other idea is to just keep them in the plastic baggies that they came with since the manufacturer already wraps them. And from what I've heard, it's hard to get them to send them in anything else because they need to be protected from each other or they would scratch each other and then just have a bunch of broken pins. And since these bags already exist, I might as well just use them for packaging. But that's for me to figure out. And now I just need to get A, some university work done and B, the thing I actually really need to get done is my Japanese pride stickers. Well, now they're all on top of each other, but you can, hello, kind of see there's a rainbow flag in the back, in the middle there's a trans flag, the non-binary flag. I've been painting cats and kimonos for pride month. And there's the, the buy and the pan flag are left to go. And then I have a set slash you can choose which one you want. I'll probably laminate them with this holographic foil, which I don't think I ever showed on camera. Probably turn this on and then you can see the sparkle. Yep. Not well, but kind of. These are little stars and it's less, it's a lot less in your face compared to the last holographic foil, which I still have like, hundred meters of which is as you can see like shards but it's super kind of opaque in the spikers and it doesn't let the design shine through and this one the stars are a bit more dispersed and the shape is also kind of cute so I will probably hollow laminate them in that foil then I have like sparkly pride stickers and my tango pin and I took it as inspiration to paint this sticker sheet. The three birds at the bottom are pretty much the ones on the print. And since it's public domain and a hundred and some 200 years old, that's no, 150 years. I cannot do math. Um, I can use them as inspiration at the top two. I just took the style and kind of created some more, including this chunky fat one at the top, which I think really charming. So this will be a little sticker sheet as well. And I might do one with a rooster and some chickens. Look at all those chickens. And I was very close to putting a knife in one of those and making it kind of untitled goose game themed. But does anyone even still know slash play that game? 